स्वयं प्रभा डिजिटल इंडिया एजुकेटेड इंडिया Let us now look at another example where I have f being x minus y and g now is x square plus y square, right? So again, my Lagrange multiplier method, my Lagrange multiplier method for this objective function and this constraint. So the constraint is this is equal to zero. The Lagrange multiplier method gives me two equations. 1 minus 2 lambda x is equal to 0 and minus 1 minus 2 lambda y is equal to 0, right? But, but g equal to 0 has, has only one solution, has only one solution and the solution is 0, 0 because it is a real valued function and it will achieve only one solution when both x and y vanishes. So, now it turns out that 0, 0 is a solution to g, but 0, 0 is not a solution to the Lagrange multiplier method, right? So, further check, check that, uh, further check that the gradient at this point also vanishes, right? Even in the previous example, the gradient vanishes we could go and check that, but in this problem the gradient vanishes. So, this is an abnormal problem where the only point we are getting does not satisfy the Lagrange multiplier, right? So, is 0, 0 an extremum? Well, technically yes, but it is not satisfying the Lagrange multiplier. So, what I am saying is technically, so that is why I am using the word technically because, uh, because uh, I am, I cannot show it via the Lagrange method that this is the minimum because this is the only point that we have under consideration, minimum or not. So, technically 0, 0, I would say 0, 0 is an extremum. It is an extremum because it is the minimum of the constraint, right? So, it is a ex extremum although, although I can show that grad f at 0, 0 is non-zero. We take the gradient we see that the gradient is 1 comma minus 1, right? So, it is never 0. So, so, but the only choice that we have is this point, which means that the role of f is, is not much. It is the constraint which is governing the final answer here. So, this is a case where f, the objective function is passive, passive and and it is the constraint which is the constraint which dictates dictates my critical point right in this case this is my critical point under consideration so we have all sorts of problems for the abnormal case right so let me let me just summarize our entire discussion for the abnormal case so i am going to extend my I am going to extend my theorem 6, my result for the normal case to the abnormal case by, by introducing, I need to develop a similar to the Lagrange multiplier method for normal case, I need to develop an equivalent Lagrange multiplier for the abnormal case, so that it holds for these cases as well. So, we extend theorem 6 by introducing, by introducing an additional an additional an additional multiplier lambda 0 right and and we consider and we consider that h is lambda 0 of f plus lambda 1 of g h is lambda 0 of f plus lambda 1 of g and if i have that the gradient of g is non-zero, that is a normal problem, we can very happily choose lambda 0 equal to 1. So, that is the standard 
Lagrange multiplier method, right? So, this is the case of normal problems, normal problem, right? So, suppose now if I have grad G which is also equal to G is 0, then we are in the abnormal problem case and we have various scenarios. We can still enforce, in this case we can still, we can still enforce grad H equal to 0 for finding the critical points by requiring, by now requiring, by requiring that lambda 0 grad f is equal to 0, right. So, suppose we have seen that in the abnormal case there were two sub cases, one the objective function passive, the other constraint being passive. So, if I have the case where f is passive, so if I have passive objective function, then in that case that is grad f and grad f is non-zero, the objective function is passive, I am going to choose, I am going to choose my lambda 0 equal to 0, so that this particular condition still is enforced, right. On the other hand, if I have passive constraint or passive g, then, then and grad f is equal to 0, I can choose any lambda 0 or lambda lambda 1, choose any, choose any lambda 0 or lambda 1, right. So, that again this condition is going to be enforced, right. So, let me now club all this summarized result in the form of a theorem. The theorem says, the theorem says the following, so the theorem now is theorem 8, it says this is the extended, extended multiplier rule. The theorem says that let omega be a subset of R n and f from omega to R n, well f from omega to R and g from omega to R be smooth functions, be smooth functions. If f has a local extrema, if f has a local extrema at this point x bar, which is in this omega, subject to the constraint, subject to the constraint, constraint g of x bar is equal to 0, then there exists, there exists these constants lambda 0 and lambda 1, not both 0, not both 0, such that the gradient of this particular quantity lambda 0 f of x comma y minus lambda 1 g of x comma y is equal to 0, right. So, suppose we are in this situation, then we, ha we have extended our standard Lagrange multiplier using another multiplier lambda 0, right, in addition to the existing multiplier lambda 1, ok. So, now we are, I think this background of finite dimensional calculus using Lagrange multiplier is sufficient for us to look at problems involving constrained functional optimization. So, we are going to start our discussion on isoperimetric problems. So, so let me now start, let me call this as, well, the sequence is now A, because we are looking as at the first constraint optimization. So, isoperimetric, perimetric problem. Isoperimetric problem. So, let <coughs> j be a functional from C0, C2, X1, X0 to R, <coughs> be a functional 
let j be a functional of the form the let j be a functional of the form j y which is integral from x 0 to x 1 of x of y comma y prime t x right. So, we again our starting point is the same let us define this functional as my equation r 1. So, my isoperimetric problem for my isoperimetric problem I need to describe a constraint. It consists of finding consists of finding finding extremals of j satisfying satisfying the boundary conditions that is the fixed endpoint conditions y of x 0 is y 0 and y of x 1 is y 1. So, we have this fixed endpoint condition let me call this condition as r 2 right and now we have an additional and additional integral constraints integral constraint of the form i of y is equal to the integral from x 0 to x 1 of g of x comma y comma y prime d x. So, let me call well this constraint is equal to some value l right. So, this particular functional is equal to a fixed value l is the constraint and let me call this this equation by r 3. Okay. So, the problem now is how to find the extremum in this constraint optimization. Well, let us recall how did we find the extremum in the unconstrained case. We used to perturb our function by introducing a perturbation of the form epsilon eta, eta and then we used to do the Taylor series expansion of the perturbed function and then integrate and then cancel and so on so forth. Now, the fact that we have a constraint we cannot just perturb freely we have to introduce an additional perturbation so that this particular constraint is always satisfied. So, what I just said is R 3 R 3 places an additional an additional restriction R 3 places an additional restriction on. So, let me just separate this out restriction on the perturbation it places an additional restriction on the perturbation uh, epsilon eta. So, we introduce we introduce introduce the perturbed introduce the perturbed function of the form the perturbed function of the form y hat is equal to y plus epsilon 1 eta 1 plus epsilon 2 eta 2 right. So, we introduce the perturbation of this form ok. So, now what have we done here? What have we done here is we have now introduced an additional perturbation epsilon 2 eta 2 which is able to satisfy such that it, this perturbed quantity is also able to satisfy satisfy y hat also satisfies the constraint r 3 right. So, we have now two switches epsilon 1 and epsilon 2 such that the constraint is also satisfied ok. So, where where my epsilon epsilon k's are small I take them relatively small. So, that my first variation involves only the first term or, or the second term of the Taylor series which is the order epsilon term right and and my eta k's are in c naught of x 0 x 1 such that such that eta k of x naught is eta k of x 1 which is also equal to 0. So, no so what I have said is the following epsilon 2 eta 2 is selected 
epsilon 2 eta 2 is selected such that such that y hat satisfies y hat satisfies r 3 right they are selected in such a way that y hat satisfies r 3 right ok. So, we are now ready to find the first variation of the functional and hence the extremum of the functional in this case the isoperimetric case. So, let us see what happens. So, now my functional my functional will involve two constants two unknown constants epsilon 1 epsilon 2 my functional j of y hat let us denote it by theta of epsilon 1 comma epsilon 2 and my constraint. So, I am I am going to denote. So, this is my how I denote my constraint i of y hat to be to be gamma of epsilon 1 epsilon 2 right. So, we see that the results the results in the Lagrange multiplier dictate the results in the Lagrange multiplier dictate that for any critical point I must have that the gradient of this minus lambda times this vanishes. We again we are going to set up the Lagrange constraint. Notice that I have changed the functional into a function. Notice the left hand side is a functional, but the right hand side is a function of the parameters epsilon 1 and epsilon 2. And similarly, for the second equation, the, the constraint itself. So, which means the moment I view this functional as a function with respect to the other parameters, I can use Lagrange multiplier method. So, the results in the Lagrange multiplier method dictate that for any for any critical point, critical point epsilon 1, epsilon 2, I must have a lambda such that the gradient the gradient of theta of epsilon 1 epsilon 2 minus lambda of gamma of epsilon 1 epsilon 2 is equal to 0, where this gradient is nothing but the gradient with respect to epsilon 1 gradient with respect to epsilon 2 ok. So, in particular in particular in particular check out that epsilon 1 equal to epsilon 2 equal to 0 satisfies both both the functional and the 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 constraint and this is indeed a critical point right. So, this is a critical point because because both the functional as well as the functional attains a, a, an extremal not vanishes but the functional attains the extremal as well as the the constraint is also satisfied. So, this becomes i of y where i where y is an extremal right. So, plugging in epsilon 1 equal to epsilon 2 equal to 0 we are going to get the extremal of the functional. So, certainly this is a critical point. So, then when let us say this is my star. So, let us let us look at the x component of this gradient. So, when we take the gradient right. So, I am going to uh, so, so, let us consider the epsilon 1 component component of star right. This is a this is actually set of set of two equations one the derivative with respect to epsilon 1 the other with respect to epsilon 2. We see the following when we see that this is also equal to the integral from x naught to x 1 of the perturbation eta 1 times the following quantity del f del y minus d d x of del f del y prime minus lambda of del g del y minus 1 by well minus d d x of del g del y prime right. So, I get the following times d x right or 
or since since my perturbation my perturbation eta 1 is arbitrary arbitrary i am going to use use lemma 2 of lecture 2 to invoke the fact that this integral constraint this integral constraint well this is set to 0 actually so i have that this integral constraint so let me introduce dx here this has to be set equal to 0 because of the star here so the integral constraint can be reduced to the differential constraint as follows i see that let me just write it in the next page i see the following that i get the following constraint that there exists a lambda in r which is a real number such that the extremal the extremal satisfies the following differential equation which is dd x of partial partial y prime minus partial partial y so this operator operated on the function f minus lambda g where f is objective function and g is the constraint right so let me call this relation as r4 now now if we consider the second component of star so consider the second so consider the epsilon epsilon 2 component of star we are going to again get the same relation r4 so so we get no additional no additional equations right so what have we found is that for isoperimetric problem the necessary condition is r4 or the euler lagrange equation so let me wrap up this this lecture by giving two major results and try to summarize the the case of isoperimetric problem the first result is in the form of theorem so theorem 9 which tells that suppose j suppose j has an extremum suppose j has an extremum at y which is a second order differentiable function subject to subject to the boundary condition r2 and the isoperimetric isoperimetric constraint r3 the isoperimetric constraint r3 then suppose further suppose further further y is not an extremal suppose y is not an extremal of i right we are making sure that well this condition this particular condition is making sure that the gradient of the isoperimetric constraints do not vanish at epsilon 1 equal to epsilon 2 equal to 0 which is equivalent to the the finite dimensional constraint that grad g is not equal to 0 so we are making sure that we are not dealing with the so called rigid extremal so y is not an extremal of the constraint itself then then there exists a lambda which is a real number such that the extremal y satisfies satisfies the equation r4 or the euler lagrange equation r4 right so this is for the normal the normal problem right the normal problem because in the normal problem we have assumed that y is not an extremal of i how about the abnormal problem we have another result in the form of another theorem let me call this as theorem number 10 this is for the abnormal case so suppose suppose j has an extremum suppose j has an extremum at y in which is a second order differentiable function subject to subject to the boundary condition r2 
subject to the boundary condition R2 and the isoperimetric isoperimetric constraint the isoperimetric constraint R3 then then there exists two numbers then there exists two numbers lambda 0 and lambda 1 well numbers which are real numbers right lambda 0 and lambda 1 not not both 0 not both 0 such that the following equation holds where the equation is such that we have the following equation which holds this is equal to 0 where where my function k is now lambda 0 f minus lambda 1 g. So, we have extended our previous result result in theorem 9 by introducing a new uh, a new function with this new set of two constants lambda 0 and lambda 1 right. Now, this covers all sets of problems including normal problems because if if y if y is not an extremal an extremal of i the constraint we can take we can now take lambda 0 equal to 1. So, this is my standard normal problem and the result reduces to theorem 9 right. On the other hand if y is an extremal is an extremal of of the constraint i then we can take lambda 0 is equal to 0 and if I have if I have that y is an extremal of both i as well as j then then it turns out that both lambda 0 and lambda 1 are undetermined we we do not worry about what is undetermined right we do not care about what is the value of lambda 0 and lambda 1 right it, it just does not matter. So, it, it would not play any role in our optimization. So, thank you very much for listening I, in the next lecture I am going to look at few other examples of this uh, isoperimetric problem including the normal as well as the abnormal problems. So, thank you very much thank you once again.